how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna be doing another book haul And I have so many books next to me because it has been so long since the last time that I posted a book haul I want to say it's been at least six weeks Like I don't think I've posted one since the month of June maybe so it has been a long time coming and because of that I have so many books. I was also just buying so many books this summer I did a lot of like thrift shopping this summer and I've just been getting my hands on so many books recently that I've been so excited to read and now I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed because there are just so many things however before we do jump into the books, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, which is a new sponsor on my channel, and it's Blue Land. Blue Land is launching a first of its kind fragranced laundry detergent tablet in the scent of spring bloom. And this is launching on August 6th. This is a scent that customers have been requesting for years, and after two years of extensive research, we finally have it. And let me tell you, this smells so good. This smells even better than I was expecting it to smell. The fragrance is so strong, and it really does smell like spring. Like, it smells amazing. The spring bloom scent is a blend of sun ripened citrus, fresh wildflowers, and golden amber. It literally is the best scent. I wish you could smell it through the screen. Not only does it smell incredible, but it's also been proven to lift some of the toughest stains, whether that's from grass or from food. I personally love the fact that Blue Land's products are people and planet friendly because they have no plastic waste. Because most of the laundry tablets that we're used to using have this plastic around it, and that plastic is just going to get put into our oceans and in the soil. But Blue Land uses no single use plastic in any of their products. Products, from the bottles to the tablets and to the wrappers for the shipping. You can get even more savings by buying refills in bulk or setting up a subscription. It's nice because their subscriptions are customizable and convenient so that you're never running out of the products that you use the most. I got the laundry detergent tablets in the spring bloom scent. And I've been loving using this product because not only does it make my clothes smell so freaking good, but it's also just so easy to use. You just drop this directly into the washing machine drum before adding in your clothes, and then you just wash your clothes on your selected cycle. It's simple and it's easy and I love the fact that they send this tin can that you can keep all of the little detergent tablets in. It's very convenient because then you can just get this refilled every time and like nothing goes to waste. They also have a ton of other cleaning products available on their website from dish soap to hand soap to cleaning sprays to toilet bowl cleaners. Like there's so many things to check out. The future of clean is definitely here. So all you have to do is click the link down below in my description to get 15% off your first kit from Blue Land. Blue Land is sharing this special offer just with my viewers. So definitely be sure to take advantage of it and thank you so much to Blue Land for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into the books. The first books that I'm gonna show you are all books that I've picked up from Book of the Month recently. So two of the books that I ended up getting in my July box from Book of the Month included One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware as well as The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. One Perfect Couple was actually one that I ended up reading during Summerween and unfortunately for me, it was like another three star. I don't know why I just keep picking up the new Ruth Ware books thinking that I'm going to enjoy them when most of the time I end up finding them to be pretty mediocre. And I also picked up The God of the Woods by by Liz Moore because this is like one of my most anticipated books of the year because this is the same author as Long Bright River. And I've got to say I'm a little bit like ugh so far because I got 130 pages in and I've actually been considering DNFing this book because I'm just finding the start of this to be very slow and like there's so many characters getting introduced and I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed and like not really connecting with it. So definitely let me know if you've read this book, if it gets better and that if you think I should try to finish it because it is a long one, it is really thick and I just don't know. And it's like devastating to me that I want to DNF this, but like that's just how I'm feeling. So let me know if it improves. And then recently for the month of August, I also picked up two books from Book of the Month. I ended up getting The Wedding People as well as The Pairing. The Wedding People is like a contemporary fiction book about this like wedding guest that like crashes the wedding. Like, I don't know, it sounds like it's gonna be a fun time. I think it takes place in Rhode Island. It sounds like it's gonna have like really good summer vibes. So I'm hoping to read this one potentially in the month of August. And then I also ended up getting The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. And this is one that I got because, you know, I'm a huge fan of Red, White, and Royal Blue. Like that's one of my favorite favorite romance books ever. And so I've been really looking forward to this one, even though a lot of books from this author that have come out in recent years have been pretty disappointing for me. So I'm going to go into this with some pretty low expectations. I don't really know anything about this, to be honest, other than the fact that it's a romance. Next up, Double Day ended up sending me Same As It Ever Was by Claire Lombardo. And dude, I'm so excited that I have my hands on this book because if you missed it earlier this year, I just read The Most Fun We Ever Had for the very first time. I actually read it for the video I was doing where I was like reading the Reese Witherspoon book club picks. And that that book actually came out like years ago. I think it came out in like 2019, but I read it for the first time this year and I fell in love. Oh my God, it was such an easy five star. It's like one of my top favorites that I've read this year. And so this is the next book coming out from that author. And I don't think she's published anything in like the last five years. So the fact that this one just published this year is like, oh, it's so crazy that I just fell in love with her writing this year and now we finally have another book. And this one, like the other one, is pretty thick. It's pretty massive. Just under 500 pages. It's like 490 pages. And I don't know much about this one either.
either, but I think this one is another kind of like literary fiction style of writing and it probably follows a family and it's probably very moving. I just know that this is gonna hit, you know? I just know. I hope that I'm gonna love it because of how much I loved the previous book that I read from this author, but I'm so excited. So thank you to Doubleday for sending me this one. I can't wait to read it. Next up, Pangled Random House sent me a few different things. One of the things they sent is Lady Killer, which this is a thriller by Catherine Wood that I am really excited to check out. I mean, gosh, does this cover just not scream summertime? And this one says, when a young woman vanishes from her remote Greek island estate, her best friend races to find her using clues found in the explosive manuscript she left behind. That sounds so cool. I love the fact that it takes place in Greece. They also sent Look in the Mirror by Katherine Stedman, which this is a thriller author that I think I've been pretty like hit or miss with in the past. Yeah, so Katherine Stedman recently published The Family Game and I was a really big fan of this, but almost everything else that she's come out with, I think I've either like DNF'd it or rated it pretty low. Like I, I haven't really been a fan of anything else that she's come out with, but I really enjoyed this. So that's why I'm really excited for Look in the Mirror. This one says, when Nina's father dies, she has left something in his will, a gleaming dream vacation home in a ball me tropical paradise. She'll find out the hard way that what you inherit from those you love can end up costing your life. Okay, so we've got an inheritance, we've got a tropical location. It sounds like a fun time. And then they also ended up sending Bear by Julia Phillips. And this is the same author as Disappearing Earth, which I have not yet read, but that book has been on like my long-term TBR for a long time because I've always been keeping an eye on it. I love the covers of her books. I feel like they're so beautiful. They always like involve nature in some way. But the reason I was especially intrigued by this one is because it says it's a mesmerizing novel about two sisters whose lives are upended by an unexpected visitor. It says this is a tale of family obsession and a mysterious creature in the woods. So like the fact that this is following two sisters and it also sounds like it's gonna take place like in the wilderness and there might be like a character that's a bear involved. Like, I don't know, it kind of sounds like once there were wolves, it kind of sounds like it could have that vibe where like it's like about sisters, but there's nature. So like, I was like, okay, sign me up. Like, I really wanna read this. And I just think this cover is so stunning. Like, isn't it so beautiful? And then, oh my God, Penguin Random House also sent All the Colors of the Dark. And this is the same author as that book We Begin at the End that came out a few years ago. And I thought We Begin at the End was good, but also for me, it was like, it was a little bit overhyped. I'm not gonna lie. Like I thought it was okay. But with this book, I've been really excited for this one because I keep hearing so many people say that like, this is their favorite book of the year. Like this is the best book of 2024 or like different things like that. So I'm really looking forward to this. It was recently a read with Jenna book club pick as you can see from this sticker that you can't even take off of the book cover that's so annoying but this one is another one that I don't really know uh too much about this other than that it says it's a soaring thriller and an epic love story that spans decades this one takes place in 1975. It says this is a missing person mystery, a serial killer thriller, a love story, a unique twist on each. It says all the colors of the dark is about what lurks in the shadows of obsession and the blinding light of hope. That sounds so interesting. I can't wait to pick this one up, but I'm also so intimidated because this one is like nearly 600 pages. Like what the heck? It's so long, but I can't wait. And I'm really looking forward to reading this one soon. And then next up, Penguin Teen ended up sending me an ARC copy of When the World Tips Over by Jandy Nelson. And this is like the new and long awaited new novel from Jandy Nelson. This is the same author as I'll Give You the Sun, which you might recognize that title as a book that came out like 10 plus years ago that everybody was obsessed with in like the early booktube days. And this is Jandy Nelson's new novel. It's coming out in September. And I am so excited. Like I can't believe Jandy Nelson is finally publishing a new novel. This one is also long, like it's a lot thicker than I was anticipating and it's about 500 pages. It's a little over 500 pages, which I was not anticipating it to be that long. I don't really know too much about this one other than that we're following these siblings who are living in Northern California's wine country. And it says that years ago, their father had mysteriously disappeared and it cracked their family into pieces. It sounds like it's gonna be like one of those like hard hitting, beautiful stories about family. And I just can't wait to check it out because I feel like Jandy Nelson is one of those authors that just has like an incredible way with words. And I just remember immediately connecting with her characters and I just loved her writing so much back in the day. And it's been so long since I've read a book from Jandy Nelson. So I cannot wait to check this one out. I think it's gonna be amazing. Okay, and the next up, Atria Books ended up sending me so many incredible things. One of the things they sent me is a finished copy of We Used to Live Here which I am so excited. I'm literally so excited, shaking in my boots to read this very soon. And this book is a horror book, but I've also heard that it's like a mystery thriller as well. Like I don't really know genre wise exactly where it's gonna fall, but this is one that I'm so excited about because it's literally described as Get Out meets Parasite. It says it's about two homeowners whose lives are turned upside down when the previous house owner's residents unexpectedly visit. I'm also so excited to let you know that my Patreon actually voted for this book to be our September book troop pick. So we are gonna be reading this one in the month of September 
September for my book club, The Book Troop. So if you'd like to join us for that, I'm very excited and very looking forward to reading this one soon. Oh my God, I can't wait. I just have such good feelings about it. And then Atria also sent Wilderness Reform, which this is one that I'm so excited about because this is from the same two authors as Old Country, which is a horror book that I read a few years ago that I really enjoyed. Like I thought it was just so creepy and so weird. And this one, oh my God, it's one of those horror books that is giving major summer vibes with this cover. And in this one, we're following this character named Ben and it says he's sent to a remote reform program for troubled teens by a juvenile court judge. And it says it takes place in the wilderness of Northwestern Montana. And he sees that there's something very off about the counselors there. Oh, it just sounds like it's gonna be so creepy and weird and I'm gonna love the vibes. I can, ju I just have a feeling about this one. I'm gonna love this atmosphere. I already know what these authors are capable of. The next book that Atria sent is Middle Tide. And this is one that I was so curious about because I've heard that this is more of like a literary mystery kind of book and that it takes place in the Pacific Northwest, which is like, you know, where I'm living. So I thought the vibes of this book would sound really great. The premise just says that this is a gripping and intensely atmospheric debut. It says disquiet descends on a small town after the suspicious death of a beautiful young doctor with all clues pointing to the reclusive young man who abandoned the community in chase of big city dreams, but returned for the first love that he left behind. It says it takes place in the small Puget Sound town of Point Orchards. I don't know if that's like a real town or not, but like the Puget Sound is definitely a real thing. And I'm just so curious to read this one. I am a little bit nervous though, because I've been noticing on Goodreads, this one's average rating is pretty low. And it seems like a lot of people are rating this really low. So it does have me nervous for it, but I'm still really excited to like give this one a shot because the setting is like in the Pacific Northwest. Lately, like a literary mystery tends to be like one of my favorite genres. Like I really gravitate towards books like that these days. Atria also sent an ARC copy of Leave the Girls Behind. This one is a thriller that's coming out October 29th. And this one sounds interesting because we're following this character who's a college dropout. She's a bartender and she's an amateur detective who just can't stay away from true crime. It says 19 years ago, her childhood friend was murdered by suspected serial killer, Ethan Oswald. And she's still tormented by the case all these years later. And then another girl goes missing from the same town when she uncovers startling new evidence that suggests that Oswald did not act alone. She's determined to find his deadly partner in crime. This sounds really interesting. I do love uh, in thrillers, the trope of of like something happened all these years ago and now they're coming back to this town to like solve the past and figure things out. Like I do tend to love that trope in thrillers. So this one sounds interesting. I can't wait to check it out. And then also Atrio was so kind enough to send me a finished copy of No Road Home by John Fram. And I feel terrible about it because if you saw my last wrap up video, then you'll know that I actually decided to DNF this book about like 60 pages in. Ugh, and I'm devastated because this is like one of my most anticipated books of the year, mainly because of how much I loved the bright lands by John Fram. But I also like, I don't know, I'm the kind of person that really struggles with like religion in horror because I'm not really a religious person myself. And so reading about religion and horror can be very hit or miss for me. I just find it hard to get invested in religious horror. And I feel like a lot of them tend to read the same. And so 60 pages into this book, I was just feeling very bored. And it feels like the story is going to be very heavy handed with like the religious horror. So if that's your thing, I definitely think you should check out this book. But unfortunately for me, I just don't love religious horror. It's, it's not my favorite kind of of horror. All right, and then Berkeley ended up sending me a few books as well. One of the books they sent me is The Love of My Afterlife, which I am so excited to read this. Like, I am dying to read this so soon. I can't wait. This one just says, a recently deceased woman meets the one in the afterlife waiting room, scoring a second chance at life and love if she can find him on earth before the 10 days are up. So it's like, I don't know if like she's getting a second chance at life after she's found the one in the afterlife. Like, I don't know what to expect with this but it sounds so cute and so unique. It kind of reminds me of like that show, The Good Place, because like that show is a show that like takes place in the afterlife. And I just think it sounds incredible. Like I can't wait to give this one a shot. I'm really hoping that this is one that I'll love because I love this cover by the way. Oh my God, like the colors just really speak to me. I love the bold yellow. And then they also ended up sending The Game Changer by Lana Ferguson. This is an author that writes romance books that I've been reading almost like every single one that she's come out with. And I always have the critique of like, they feel like they're a little bit too like steamy and erotic for my taste. Or at least, you know, in romance books, like I tend to get bored when there's like literally no plot and it's just like sex scene after sex scene after sex scene. And like, yes, sometimes I do feel that way about this author's books, but I still always want to give her books a chance because I do really like her writing and I like the way she writes, you know, like the chemistry between her characters. And this is one that I wanted to check out because it involves like a hockey player. And I was like, oh my God, how fun. Like, I don't know, I love reading romances that involve hockey players. So I was like, you know what? Like, yes, let's give this a shot because I do love reading about baking. I love reading about hockey. So it should be a good time, right? I'm thinking this is gonna be right up my alley. And then the next one that Berkeley sent is this one 
one called We Love the Nightlife. And this is by Rachel Collarcroft, which I haven't actually read anything from this author yet, but I know that she's published a few thrillers, one of them being that one Stone Cold Fox that I know a lot of people really enjoyed. But I haven't read anything from this author yet, but when I saw and heard what this one was about, I was like, okay, hold up, wait. Like, I need to have this book in my hands. Like, I can't wait. So this one says, locked in a toxic female friendship, two vampires careen towards catastrophe. And it says this one takes place in London in 1979. Two women with a deep love of disco meet one fateful night on the dance floor, changing the course of both of their lives forever. Oh my god, it just sounds like it's gonna be so much fun. Like, two female vampires in the 70s. I just can't wait. I've been on a real, you know, like, vampire kick lately, where I just really want to read books that involve vampires in any way, shape, or form. And so I'm feeling like this could be a fun time. Like, this could be right up my alley. I don't know if I should save this for, like, the month of October to read it during, like, peak spooky season. Dutton ended up sending me Dad Camp, which I know this sounds like a random pick for me, or like, why would I pick up this book? Because this one is a, like, kind of contemporary fiction story about this father-daughter week at a remote summer camp. And so it's kind of like a story about a dad bonding with, like, his 11-year-old daughter who he feels like he's, like, losing touch with a little bit as she's starting to grow up. And I know you're probably like, why would you pick up this book? And the reason is because... Well, not only did this book get compared to like Cheaper by the Dozen, which was one of my favorite childhood movies growing up, okay? I adored Cheaper by the Dozen, but I also wanted to pick up this book because I feel like it's so rare that I read books that are centered on like father-daughter relationships. So I feel like I needed more of that in my life, but also because when I was a kid, like when I was a really young girl, my dad signed us up for this like, it was like a Girl Scouts, but like dads and like their daughters. It was like dads and princesses. I don't know. My dad signed us up for something like this. It wasn't like a camp or anything, but it was something that we did weekly together. And we would go and do like all these outdoor activities together. And it was such like a part of my childhood that I just really remember. And I just remember loving spending that time with my dad and just getting those like bonding moments. And so because that was like such a big part of my childhood, I thought reading something like this would be so special. And so I just thought, why not? You know, like it sounds like it's gonna be really cute. I mean, maybe this won't be like, the kind of book for me. Like, I don't know. We'll just have to see. But I wanted to give it a shot because I was like, this sounds so cute. And then Gallery Books ended up sending me a finished copy of The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. And this is one that I did read. I read this like all the way back in May. I swear it's been so long since I've done a book haul video. But this is another romance novel from Christina Lauren, which I have been a pretty big fan of Christina Lauren. I mean, most recently their stuff has been kind of hit or miss for me. But luckily this one was mostly a win. I ended up giving this one like four stars. And I liked this one a lot because it took place in like a tropical location there was a wedding and it was like one of those situations where like they have to pretend to be married with like his family and it was just a fun time like I don't know I had a really good time with this one and then Simon and Schuster ended up sending me a copy of Bad Taurus by Carol Carver and if you didn't know Carol Carver is actually a pen name for the author CJ Cook so like I don't know exactly why she was writing another thriller under a pen name but like how interesting is that like the more that you know and unfortunately ugh, if you saw my summer Wayne vlogs I did actually try to read this one and I ended up DNF it at about 100 pages in and I feel terrible about it because this one did sound so interesting and like it could be right up my alley but I was just like immediately bored and I just could not get invested in this one so I think I'm probably going to be passing on this copy to a friend but oh my god it's so unfortunate because this is one that I was really looking forward to and I feel like this cover has really great summer vibes and then next up Vintage Books ended up sending me Director's Cut and this is from the same author as Sizzle Reel which is a book that I ended up DNFing like I wasn't a huge fan of that book but I was still like open you know to giving this author another shot because this is a romance book and if you can't tell from the cover it's a female female romance and something that I love about this book is that the protagonist is a 29 year old celebrated award-winning actress so like how cool is that because I'm also 29 I feel like we'd have so much in common because of that this one sounds especially cool because it says she's gonna be working on her directorial debut so it sounds like it's gonna be like partially a romance but also like a book about her working on her dream of becoming a director and like that just sounds so cool because I do love reading about anything in like the film industry becoming a director. I think that's such a cool thing to read about. So hopefully this one ends up being a success for me. And then Hyperion and Disney Books ended up sending me a copy of Tangled Up in You by Christina Lauren. This is another book from Christina Lauren, but this one's really cool because it's part of the meant to be series that all these romance authors are doing where they all do like rewrites of like a specific fairy tale princess that I think is just so cool. And so in this one, if you couldn't tell from the title and the cover, this one is a rewrite of like Rapunzel or Tangled. So I'm so excited to check it out. Like I love the idea of like a rewrite, like a modern rewrite on Tangled. I think that's so cute. I was also just reading the back of this book and it says that 
She has her lifelong dream of attending Corona College. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, is this a real place or is this a made up place? Because I grew up in Corona, California. So I'm like, is that a coincidence or like, what's up with that? So this sounds like it's gonna be a fun time. I can't wait to read this one soon. And then, oh my gosh, the author was so kind enough herself to send me a copy of this. She reached out to me on Instagram and there's this book called Nanny Needed by Georgina Cross. And Georgina was so kind enough to reach out to me on Instagram and asked if I wanted a copy of this. And I was like, yes, because I've actually been hearing about this book over the years, this one's a thriller that came out a few years ago now, I'm pretty sure. And Georgina said she thought that I would like it because it takes place in New York, which is so cute because like, yeah, that's so on brand for me. I love anything that takes place in New York. And this is one of those stories where like, you know, our main protagonist becomes a nanny because she's trying to get out of like a really shitty situation, it sounds like. It says the job sounds like a dream come true, a glamorous penthouse apartment on the Upper West Side of New York City, a salary that adds several zeros to her current income. So it like, it seems too good to be true. And then I think she starts to realize that maybe it actually is too good to be true and like there's some shady shit going on. So like, ah, oh, I can't wait to check this one out. I think it sounds like it's gonna be right up my alley. And it was so sweet because the author sent all this really cute stuff. I mean, look at this box, by the way. Like this is so cute. She sent all these cute little goodies that have like little New York stickers all over them. And then she also sent a bunch of cute little like New York City stickers. Like how cute is she for sending these? Oh my God, that's adorable. And then some other books that I received in the mail, Brandon ended up sending me First Light by Liz Karen. And he sent this off my Amazon wish list. So like, thank you so much to Brandon. I can't wait to read this one because this one is actually the sequel to Night's Edge, which is like a vampire book that I was like really obsessed with when it came out. And this one, First Light, is the sequel. And I think that this one takes place like right after the first book ended. Night's Edge was one of those books that was part of like my vampire awakening, like making me realize how much I do love reading books that involve vampires. And so I'm hoping that this one will do the same thing for me. Like I'm hoping that I'll be just as obsessed with this, but thank you so much to Brandon for sending me this copy. Then thank you so much to Deborah for sending me Blood on the Tracks volume 16. This is one that I actually just read at the end of July because as soon as I got this in the mail, I was like, well, it needs to be read immediately. And I still just loved it. I don't know. There's something about this horror series that I just absolutely love. I feel like the series is getting more and more sad and more and more disturbing. And the series really involves like a mother and son relationship that is very toxic. Like, you know, we're talking Bates Motel kind of vibes but I just really love this series. So thank you so much to Deborah for sending me this one. And then thank you so much to Lindsay for sending me two books in the mail. She sent me Maggie's Grave as well as Night Shoot, which is so freaking kind of her because, you know, I've been on this journey of like reading books from David Sodergren recently. In the month of July, I read three of his books, including Maggie's Grave. Like I got to this one right away just because I've just been really enjoying his stuff. So now I'm so excited to read Night Shoot. This author is like a horror author and he writes like these very extremely graphic, gory horror books, but there's something about the way that he writes his characters and just like his writing in general, I just really gravitate towards his writing. I think his books are so fast paced and they're like so easy to fly through. And I just love that about his writing. So I can't wait to read Night Shoot soon. And then also thank you to whoever sent me The Dangerous Convenience Store Volume 1. This is a manga or a manhwa, I guess, that I've been really looking forward to. It's all in color. And I say thank you to whoever sent this because it didn't come with a note and I haven't been able to track down who actually sent me this. So if you were the one to send me this, please leave a comment down below so that I can thank you personally because I'm so excited for this and I've been hearing great things about this ever since my friend Gavin talked about this and he raved pretty highly about this. It says sparks fly in this full color boys love hit webtoon about a down on his luck cashier and a handsome stoic gangster. All right so this last stack of books that I have are all books that I've bought for myself over these last couple of weeks. I mean if you saw the recent vlog that I posted of like my week with my friend Katie while she was visiting I bought so many books while she was here because we went to all these different bookstores and we went to like different thrift shopping and different things like that. So I bought so many books then. So I'll quickly go through which ones these are, but I won't spend too much time on these because I've already showed them to you. But one of the ones I got was Eileen, which I'm really looking forward to. I actually found this at Value Village for only like four bucks or something. And I'm really looking forward to this because I haven't read too many books from this author yet. And I've just been hearing a lot about her books. And speaking of that author, I also ended up getting my year of rest and relaxation. I found this one at a half price books for not too expensive. And this is another one that I've just been so curious about. And look at the back, it's like bright pink. But I think I am gonna try to do a video like in the month of September maybe where I like read a bunch of like weird books or like weird literary books that everybody talks about and this is definitely one of those books that I would read for that video and some other books that I would also read for that video include Earthlings and I'm a fan these are two more books that I just hear people say like oh these are super weird these are ones that I also found at half price books and this one especially I'm excited about because ever since I read Convenience Store Woman by this author I really loved it and my main complaint with that one was that I wanted it to be more weird and then everybody was like well then you need to read Earthlings because it's like freaking weird. So like, we'll see, but I'm glad that I was able to pick up both of these. And then at the half price books, I also ended up picking up Bridge as 
well as Not So Perfect Strangers. This one, Not So Perfect Strangers, is like a social thriller that I've been hearing really great things about. I actually want to read this one very soon, I think. And then Bridge is a book that I had heard nothing about. Like, I've never even heard anybody talk about this, but it got recommended to me when I was doing the video of like reading books that you think that I'm gonna give five stars. This one was mentioned and I was like, okay, it sounds interesting. This one involves infinite realities which sounds like it's gonna be so cool. I think it's kind of like a sci-fi kind of thing. So I don't really know anything about it, but it was on the clearance section for only $5 for this hardcover. So I was like, why not? And then I also, from the ARCs shelf at the bookstore that I love to go to, I found both of these. I found Honey and The Unwedding. And The Unwedding is a book that I just recently read because I'm gonna be doing my next round of like reading Reese Witherspoon's book club picks. So you can be expecting that video soon. I think it's gonna be the next video that goes up after this one. And then I also found Honey, which I'm really excited to check this one out. Because all I know about this one one is that it takes place in like the late 90s and early 2000s and we're following this character who's like a young pop star. And then speaking of that video where I did reading books that you think that I'll give five stars, for that video I ended up buying both The Measure and The Haunting of Velkwood, which both of these ended up being a pretty big success for me. I mean this one was actually a five star, like one of my top favorite books that I've read this year, and then this one ended up being a four star I think. But both of these are books that I'm planning to keep on my shelves, so like I'm glad that they ended up being such a win. I did end up buying Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay. This is one that I ended up getting from Barnes and Noble because they had the very exclusive like red sprayed edges but then also like the end papers of this one are also really cool and so I could not resist picking this one up and I did end up reading this one during Summerween and luckily I didn't hate it. It ended up being around like a three star for me. I feel very like middle of the road on this book unfortunately but I'm still glad that I have this copy because it's so freaking stunning and so beautiful. And then I also ended up picking up Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. This is a book that I recently just read for my book club, The Book Troop. I read this one with my mom and my sister and we recently just had our live show. So if you missed the live show with all of our thoughts, I will have the live show linked down below. I've also been using my Aardvark book subscription service thing recently because they've been coming out with so many interesting picks. Because if you haven't heard of Aardvark book club, they're kind of like book of the month where they're like a book subscription service and they have like a few different picks every month and you get to choose your picks. And recently I've picked up both The Eyes Are the Best Part and I Was a Teenage slasher from them. I find that with Aardvark, they do often have a lot of the horror books that I'm really interested in reading, so that's very exciting. But The Eyes Are the Best Part ended up being like one of my top favorite horror books of the year. Like, I think this is in my top five books that I've read this year. Like, I'm obsessed with this. There's a lot of, uh, you know, creepy and grotesque body horror though, especially when it comes to eyeballs and like the idea of eating eyeballs. But like, there was something about it. I just love the writing in this so much. And then I also picked up I Was a Teenage Slasher because I'm actually going to be reading this for the book troop in the month of August. So if you want to read along with us, I can't wait to pick up this book soon. Stephen Graham Jones has been very like hit or miss for me a lot when it comes to his horror books. So I'm hoping that this one ends up being a win because I can't wait. And then I also recently bought The Har and The Forgotten Island because these are two books that I ended up reading during Summerween. They're both horror books. And you know, once again, this author, David Sodergren, he's become a recent favorite for me in the horror genre. But I'm so glad that I've been reading so many horror books from this author lately because I've definitely discovered a new favorite horror author. I think The Har, without a doubt, is like my number one favorite that I've read from him. This was the one that's five stars. This is like in my top 10 favorite books that I've read this year. I'm obsessed with this. I'm afraid that this is going to become my whole entire new personality. But then The Forgotten Island was a really great time as well. I gave this one four stars. This one has great like tropical island, like haunted island kind of vibes, which I really loved. And I just really love his books and I would highly recommend checking them out if you can handle some horror that is very gory and gruesome, but also very like interesting and has very interesting characters. And then one book that I picked up recently on the Amazon Prime Day sale, because Amazon Prime did have a sale and I I decided to pick up uh, Heartless by Elsie Silver because this book was only about like $10 on the Amazon Prime Day sale. So I was like, you know what, why not? And this is a romance book that I am excited, but also like very nervous to read. I mainly only got this because my friend Katie Colson is like absolutely obsessed with this romance series and she's convinced that I need to read this. And so I'm scared though, because this romance series is about a cowboy. I think like, I think the love interest is a cowboy. And that's like the main reason why I'm scared because cowboys just like, don't really do anything for me. I mean, I did recently just see Twisters and you know, Glenn Powell definitely does do things for me. And so maybe I'm just saying like, maybe if I picture Glenn Powell and Twisters as like the love interest in this book, then maybe it would help me power through when otherwise I feel like I would get the ick from the Cowboys. I don't know why, I just would. So anyways, I don't know when or how soon I'm gonna be reading this, but I did pick up a copy. So it could be happening in the near future. I also 
I'm like, oh my god, I'm so excited to be holding this book in my hands because I got Slow Dance by Rainbow Rowell. I literally bought this as soon as it came out the other day because I've just been so excited for it and I cannot believe that this book has recently been announced as the Reese Witherspoon book club pick for the month of August. You should have heard the scream that came out of my body when I realized that this was going to be the August book club pick because as you know, I've been working on this Reese Witherspoon book club video thing for this whole year. Like I knew like whatever the August pick was, I was going to have to read it no matter what the pick was. And for her to actually pick one of my most anticipated books of the year, like, okay, Reese, thank you. This is one that I don't even know what it's about. I don't know what it's about really. I don't care because Rainbow Rowell is like one of my favorites. Like Fangirl is probably like my most reread book of all time. And it's been a long time since Rainbow Rowell has come out with anything. Yes, this is one of my most anticipated books of the whole year. And I cannot wait to be reading it very soon. Oh my God, I can't wait. And then the last two books that I've bought recently are these two books. I got Someone You Can Build a Nest In and A Certain Hunger. And I bought both of these books for very specific reasons because I'm gonna be reading both of these books books with my friends Gavin and Katie for these like collaborative videos that we're going to be working on very soon. I mean gosh hopefully by the time that this video goes up you will have seen the middle of the night video that we all did together. How these videos work is that we're all just like reading the same book for each other's channels and we kind of get to see like our difference in reading taste and see how each other feels about the books. And so like they did this for my channel for middle of the night we're going to be reading someone you can build a nest in for Gavin's channel and then we're going to be reading a certain hunger for Katie's channel. I'm really looking forward to reading both of these very soon and those vlogs are going to be like filled with spoilers so if you want to be reading along with us then I would definitely recommend checking out these books soon so that you can do that. Yeah, wow that is a wrap that is the full book haul that was so many things like my bed is literally covered in books right now for real look at this what the heck that's a lot of books. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And if you've read any of these books that I've mentioned, please do let me know what your thoughts are on them. Are there any on here that you're also like dying to read? Like any that are on your TBR? Or which books do you think that I should prioritize over others? Definitely let me know all of your thoughts down below. And thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.